Commission's report March 24th, Wilson County Commission's report March 24th, 2014. We delayed it just slightly because of uh, that we uh, had had an error as far as posting, but it's, it didn't take us seven minutes to get that straightened out, so we'll go on with the report now. Now in session. Uh, uh, let's see, would you leave us some prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Go down to item eight. Uh, discuss and take action on Child Abuse Prevention Month Proclamation, April 2014. Uh, Ms. Burdett, would you like to read this into the record for us? I'll let uh, Dorothy. Oh, yeah. This is Dorothy Perez. She's on board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. They, they, they'll appreciate that rather than listen to me read. All right. Child Abuse Prevention Month Proclamation. Proclamation, April 2014. 
Whereas, every child is a precious gift, full of lim limitless abilities and promise, and deserves to be reared in a positive, safe environment, free from the threat, influence, and harmful effects of child abuse. And whereas 60,000 children are confirmed abused each year in Texas, abuse and neglect can cause traumatic, psychological, emotional, and physical damage to children of all ages. And the prevention of child abuse is important to their healthy development. And whereas communities must make every effort to promote programs that benefit children and their families, child abuse prevention is a community responsibility and finding solutions depends on involvement among all people. And whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among agencies, schools, communities of faith, law enforcement agencies, and the business community, and whereas the color blue has been chosen as the international symbol for child abuse because it represents the bruised and battered bodies of the thousands of children abused every day, and whereas the Wilson County Children's Services Board is facilitating the promotion of Child Abuse Prevention Month in our county by announcing April 9, 2014 as Go Blue Day. Therefore, we the Commissioner's Court of Wilson County do hereby proclaim the month of April 2014 to be Child Abuse Prevention Month and encourage all citizens to wear or display blue ribbons to honor all children and to promote the prevention of child abuse and neglect. Oh, by the way, uh, Commissioner Morales is sick today, so he's not here. All of the ladies are uh, involved with the uh, child agency. Would you please stand? You can stand too, Jennifer. You work with <laughs> we want to tell you how much we appreciate all that y'all do. That that's a very important part. That it's very it's so important, but not noticed by everybody in the community. And we do appreciate very much your service. Thank you. Queen, I just let them know. We also, just in case y'all want to know, because we have the office for the the count, the, the office for the uh, child protective services has moved, and it's off of uh, it gets across from the post office. So if any of y'all have any concern, if people ask you, that's where it has moved. It's no longer right over here on 181. Okay. What is that? What is that? Along the drive. Along the drive. I can Along the drive. Oh, well, thank you all again.
a resolution of the Wilson County Commission Court in support of the Wilson Area Housing Foundation. Cowboy Breakfast, Saturday, April 26, 2014, at the Sacred Heart Parish Grounds with Hudbrough with both parks facility. And whereas the foundation was organized to provide housing improvements for families referred from school districts, and all our referrals come from the school district, Formsville Independent, or one of the other school districts. Whereas the, and this is a real goof on our part, we're arguing between us whether this is the 12th or 13th. So in one place it says the 12th, another says the 13th. So we're going to go for the 12th. <laughs> Whereas the breakfast place will be on sale for 10 bucks, and I'm skipping. Now therefore be it resolved that the Wilson County Commissioner's Court does hereby support the social services office activities relating to families in need of residential assistance, and hereby urges the community and the business community to support the 12th annual R and R that stands for Commissioner uh, Rotter. <laughs> okay, Cowboy Breakfast, which this year will be located at Sacred Heart, and urges community support. Please, uh, if, if you'll let me skip ahead, use Brenda's number there. Brenda Public is uh, the most able uh, paralegal at our office. She's across from Trail Riders, and the number there is two one six four zero seven five. And we ask that you approve this in support of our efforts and uh, ask that you be there. And most of your commissioners and judge and, and uh, county clerk and sometimes even the commissioner, not the commissioner, the auditor will come over and visit with us and we'll get a picture of you. Unfortunately, I haven't framed those, but I wanted to get them to the sheriff's office as soon as I could and I haven't done that. It's not a picture, it's a profile. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I didn't want to get that far. Anyway, with, with a little humor involved, uh, we ask you to support us and be there and enjoy a few minutes of conviviality. Yes, sir. We'll get our name on there, Judge. Good idea. <laughs> Motion. Remember, this Mr. is a volunteer organization. By hope, Commissioner Tommy. And the reason is the, the mix-up was for that 12th and 13th, that first year, it was just him and him and having breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Emmett's uh, free of the uh, problem with his foot, although he's still walking around with the limp. And I, I was pointed out this morning, I'm not sure where Emmett is, but uh, he's doing well. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. And thank you for the suggestion, Judge. <laughs> and Brenda's number's on the bottom of that document, Judge. Um, I guess we'll go back to item four, public hearing. Courthouse Annex 1, 2, 3, update, comment, support. Um, we've heard uh, a little bit more from Austin on the call uh, uh, last Monday uh, regarding the funding for the foundation the Belief Fund. Uh, the engine process actually the met last Tuesday on the matter. So we're, we're still hearing the weight here from them for final decisions. Um, but more we've heard so far is all going to be good. Uh, we have a couple of weeks of reviewing uh, by the snow, but we should still be hearing on that date, so the 2nd of April. Um, we will hopefully get, our, get the, uh, the funds to kick off with the courthouse. Um, we're due back uh, members on the Criminal Justice Centre um, of the construction estimates. Um, they, they say something on Friday, I haven't seen my emails as of this morning. But uh, we'll be, as it comes through, we'll be reviewing those and seeing if the numbers are, are good or for bad, where we need to be. Uh, but the courthouse, the existing courthouse numbers, they're good, and we just waiting to hear from the county. But we can't, from the, from, the, from the federal money, we can't do anything until that money's been apportioned. Otherwise, we'll be losing the chance of, of, of change. So, we'll start, we'll start doing that the bed. Um, the bench seats. Finally, they finally contact us back with the, the bench seats, so hopefully we'll be able to secure them over next week. Also, I'll be in contact with you on that. Um, and 
that's it we'll be on for today. Hopefully we'll have one you soon next Monday. Just uh anybody have anything else? I just want to ask, Lindsay, have y'all met with all of the department heads, other, you know, that's going to be working in the courthouse, uh, everybody, to make sure they have enough space? For the room. most part, yeah, we've met with everybody in the criminal justice center. Um, the, uh, we met with everybody, I think, with all department heads at least once. Um, the old, in the old courthouse, um, we, we, we haven't had a lot of conversations in the old courthouse with who's going to be in there, because the most part, in Chiba wise that was at the beginning was sort of, we weren't focusing on the interior, we were more concerned with the exterior, getting the exterior envelope, foundation sorted. Uh, but that sort of evolved over special requirements and who was going to go in there. Um, so we met with the county attorney on it, and, um, and probably one or two individuals we got to meet with a little bit further. But we really hadn't sort of organized the interior of that. That wasn't sort of enough that we would have started. But uh, anybody there, we, we, we still got final decisions to make on the interior um, when we get when we envelope it seriously secure. It's it's gonna be a point of for the most part we're leaving interior walls where they're going to be. Um, upstairs to make the second floor work for the county attorney's office, that needed a bit of rejigging if you've done that. Um, and I think we're all pretty happy with how that looks. Um, but again we were trying to keep as many of the set of the interior walls um, as as the sort of I know we had at, at one meeting like this where we had the the uh, the floor plans here that we went through with department heads and talked about how it would be situated and uh, how the <coughs> commissioner's offices would be situated, the the treasurer, uh, the auditor, um, and how that would be affected by the by the move. And commissions too. We look at commissions offices too there as well. Just kind of do a little review of what what we've talked about. So it seems to be some mix ups from time to time as to how we're going to get it done. And as like I said, if anybody we've done this before, but if anybody has a problem with it, we'll we can discuss it and get it taken care of. What it looks like now, the first thing is going to be the envelope of the court. And the courthouse and the criminal justice facility uh, on 3rd Street here can run part simultaneously. I mean, the courthouse will start remodeling the courthouse, so forth, so on. Of course, we've got to be out of this building before the library can, can move in here. So the library has got to be cleared before Miss Eva can move into the library. So what it appears, and, and like I said, if it's different take on it. Jan will either stay where she's at while the construction goes on or move partially into the where the old treasure used to be. More than likely stay where she's at. Uh, but until Miss Eva can move into the old library building, then that door between the treasurer's office and hers will be taken out and there'll be a section of that included in the treasurer's office. The uh, of course, once the criminal justice and the courthouse is completed, the county attorney, the auditor, the treasurer, the county judge, and the commissioners will all move into the courthouse. The, what was the old district courtroom will become the commissioner's courtroom and the county courtroom for county court uh, judicial services. The when the uh, adult probation moves out of the building, their occupying on the corner where will become the uh, archives of the that we now lease from the paper. Um, the uh, DA's office will move into the criminal justice facility. Uh, the uh, um, What's currently the DA's office now could either be sold or leased by the county for, for whatever available. You know, I mean, it's 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 a nice office building downtown. So the um, I spoke with uh, Mr. Thorne the other day and, uh, about <coughs> the trees along <coughs> Third Street over there. That the possibly before we get now to the construction of that. If maybe the commissioners could 
could remove those trees and uh, be much more cost saving than than having some uh, one, especially when that field come in and do it. How many trees are we talking? About five in there. About five, yeah. But the five big um, Arizona ash trees, what they are. Um, and uh, the uh, Oh, and uh, Ms. Eva had said sometime back as far as the old library that could do that with local contractors to take care of that. And I had a call that Friday from Mr. Thorne and, and about that somebody called him and asked him about that. So this afternoon he's going to walk through that building with Ms. Eva to kind of give her some uh, ideals as to what he has. And, and, but, uh, Outside of that, uh, am I missing something that we need to talk about on it? I just wanted to make sure that, that he met with everybody, make sure that he, he got the room. That that was one of the things that everything everybody was, everybody that each step he, he took and, and in many cases not only the department head but some of the people from the department <coughs> met with him to explain their needs such as uh at up probation and, and uh <coughs> others. So met with the district judges as far as the courtroom to make sure they had. I think sheriffs met with him and, and everything. And, and, uh, I think the biggest thing on the old courthouse was it was really most people who needs to go in there for the most part, but we were trying to keep most of the offices and we, because we our limited budget, trying to keep the walls where they were. We were even going to try and keep some of the offices that have been recently painted to maybe keep that as sort of the, the running theme for the color scheme. So the interior to it was we knew that the county attorney to move over there, we had commissioners moving over there. But for the most part, you know, the envelope wasn't going to change. Most interior walls were going to change. We were trying to bring those sort of uh, intervening, sort of intermediate walls in that would create the commission's offices. But for the most part, apart from having to upgrade the um, restroom facilities, which we have to code, most of the interior really was staying more or less as it's. Um, so and it was sort of a bit of a flux area where he was there, the area currently is, but who would then occupy that area which he was moving out. And, and uh, the grant that we were talking about, when we when we got into this, uh, it appeared that we probably wasn't going to get any grant. And this is a four hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollar grant, which will that's that much, you know, that'll help. And that's uh, the uh, not reading room. Hmm. And, and there's there's more grant money available, but in reading the, the everything that's required it, it's probably not worth the effort to, to go because they're looking at removing the stucco off the courthouse taking all of the annexes off and the annexes themselves the, the cost to, to replace them would be a tremendous amount so once we get through this phase of it we should everything should be clean sailing and, and uh, it's really an exciting time for our county to, to be able to meet the growth with the buildings that we have as economically as, as we've been able to, to put it together. And uh, it, it's, it's just, uh, like I said, it's a very exciting time. I think once people see the results of it and see that there's gonna be little or no impact on their taxes, uh, that the people look at it in much different light than many have in the past. Yeah, so uh, this is a, public hearing on Courthouse Annex 123 update comments and questions. And that means that anyone in the audience may have a question or a comment or whatever at this time. Jim, I was just gonna say, if there is a department head or an elected official that wants to um, not necessarily revisit from the standpoint of any changes, but to revisit from the standpoint of explanation, explanation of Again, what we're doing, I assume that that. Well, the lens is available. I mean, any time, like, I'll my cards, anyone call me any time, I'll visit with you. Would you be available at the court today, since you're already here? I'd love to. Sure. Judge, I don't know if the subpoena press will contact you, uh, they contacted me. Just, Lizzie, when do you think we'll be in full swing? That's what I'm thinking, too. I, I basically told, told uh, that was, uh, I told you know, as far as that parking lot, I, 
I said, it'll be right in a full swing. I said, this might be a good time to test it out at the uh, park to see how it works. Sorry, what was the question for? Well, we should be in full swing as far as construction going, in, like in October, when we have the Pena Fest. Oh, yes. Oh, That's yes. what I'm thinking, right? Oh, yes. That's going to be hard, what you're saying, to allocate the parking lot Correct. to the carnival. And we need, we'll need oh, that because that. I'm sure a part of that, they'll be looking for lay down space. So, and we briefly talked about that when we were digging holes. With right. When, but we need to look at you know where the construction fence would be, where we can have dedicated maybe those parking spots where we have all the trucks parked. Maybe that would just get fenced off. That that's the lay down prep area. That's maybe the access to the court site, which still enables us to have uh, the use of the rest of the square facilities that doesn't interrupt. How far do you foresee the the, the construction fence on the north side? You know, the long going out. How about the commission for them? You know. Um, <coughs> Will it be set out further than it is now? I don't think so. I think I would like where we were all parked along uh, the side. Then we, were, I think, if we could probably take that first row that that sort of faces towards the courthouse um, on the um, on the north side, right? The one that we had the um, you've got the if you've got the front of the courthouse. You've got the, the parking then that runs along, not on, not on the main street side, but in the parking lot side, that first row right there. I think if we probably dedicate that to, as the lay down hard tarmac area that they could come in, bring vehicles in if they needed to, um, and have it, you know, maybe have storage, lockable storage right there. That's probably most of what we need. But then on the, on the courtyard itself, going towards the north side. Yeah. Downtown area, will we have to move, move that fence out? I don't out? think so. I think we'll probably probably uh, in, in, on a temporary basis when you redo that wall. That's about it. That's what all it would be. But I think we could. I mean, it literally be moving out maybe when when that wall comes down, it's going to have to be set yeah, out. Yeah, that, on that one end. side for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's probably going to be it. I don't think. I don't think we'll need the rest of the fencing. Probably stay where it needs to be. And literally, we all be a point of maybe adding an extra length gate on both sides to take the whole fence, just move it out temporarily. And we just probably just leave it there until for the, for the duration until we are prepared to go. Just like the only thing it might interfere with would be the corner set up, the corner with the, and the, all the other vendors and so forth that use that. Sure, the city used to put that on that street in front of City Hall, didn't they? They sure. still do. Still do. And the yeah, they yeah. Up, if, if only they're going to take up the front row. Like he's saying, that wouldn't be bad at all. it wouldn't be bad at all then, if that's all they need. Yeah, I don't think we, there's, there's a lot of room inside the fencing as well, but uh, it would require probably some garage replacement, but for the most part, they can do a lot of setup inside the fence currently as well. So I think they'll probably have most of what they need to do there. Then that really wouldn't affect the carnival that much, if that's it all. It really shouldn't. I'll take your point. Yeah, if that's all it is. I'll tell you what, that's still us being in the middle. Yeah. I think the carnival piece or the city, the peanut festival. festival go right through Lindsay, but right. I don't want to get in the middle of it. Well, all of a sudden they're ready to set up and we have space taken and they don't. <coughs> they work for you. Good for you. Just deal we'll know in the next month. Yeah, yeah just let us know and we'll look forward to making that and we'll make sure that with the cable company we'll make sure we get that squared away. I mean, for the most part, I think you can imagine building, covering the scaffolding. Give you some idea of you know, the, and then you need to walk outside that, but for the most part, that's most of what we really are need. They'd be up close to the building when replacing wall section, things like that. The, the only issue is that, uh, assuming that the space would work for the carnival, the issue would be that it pretty well ties the parking lot up for about 10 days, doesn't it, from the standpoint of set up and take down, whether somehow that would interfere with our ability to continue bringing supplies in. And I think we leave that one every way over. Yeah, I mean. What they'd be looking at mobilizing for the, for the festival, when was that? Roughly what week? Oh, it's always the second weekend of October. So you've been looking at probably the, the third week of September starting to... So, the, the first, the second week, the first week of October. That's yeah. where they just, a, a week, a week prior just a to... Week. Yeah, a week. Yeah, but you've got a couple of days to take down. So you've you got about a 10-day period, okay. it seems to me. They would start probably set up on like the fifth, and they'd be moved out by the twelfth. Okay, great. I guess the only question I have is there is still some time to do some interior tweaking on the old courthouse. Yeah. As far as you're drawing. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Excuse me, is there a proposed date of completion? Not quite yet until we get until we get the uh, final numbers from general contract. There's a number of projects being carried on at one time with this that, that one depends on the other. Yeah. The, the feeling was that as far as, sort of stuff. as far as moving back into the old courthouse, we're going to be probably <coughs> the first quarter of, of next year. Yes. And probably not too far behind as far as. No, hopefully not. Right, almost right behind it. We could go to the center if we can get make sure we secure our contract that we can use the right numbers. And and those two are dependent upon obviously the library coming in here and then that. So yes, you're right. It's exactly going right. to be it's going to be very difficult to, to set up a hard date until right. certain things happen. We've got an idea, but it's sort of it, it's getting it's getting the the old courthouse livable again so that we can get everyone over there. But that affects the budget also. Um, not necessarily, no. I mean, it, 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 it's because we still, we're still <coughs> great to receive numbers on the, the criminal justice center, this building here, the mm -hmm. center, the, the, the budget and the numbers we've had in for the, for the courthouses, we've got those. So we're, 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 we're good. They've got to read, because we had it in, I don't know, maybe three months ago, they've got to uh, rerun a few different numbers to make sure the numbers are still fine, but we're within the budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Things that we appreciate. We'll move on then to Item 5, Jennifer Fernandez, Guadalupe Valley Family Violence Shelter Incorporated, proclamation recognizing April 2014 Concessional Assault Awareness and Prevention Month in Wilson County. Good morning. Good morning. Whereas every two minutes another person in the United States is sexually assaulted, and in Texas, one in five women and one in 20 men are victims of sexual assault. Whereas according to a study conducted by the Texas Association Against Sexual Assault and the University of Texas at Austin School of Social Work, approximately 1.9 million Texans have been sexually victimized. Whereas most victims are sexually assaulted by someone they know, and only 20% of rapes are ever reported to the police. Whereas it is appropriate to salute the more than 20 million victims who have survived sexual assault in the United States and the efforts of victims, volunteers, and professionals who combat sexual assault. Whereas national and community organizations and private sector supporters should be recognized and applauded for their work in promoting awareness about sexual assault. Whereas police, forensic workers, and prosecutors should be recognized and commended for their hard work and innovative strategies to increase the percentage of sexual assault cases that result in the prosecution and incarceration of offenders. Whereas sexual assault is a persistent and pervasive problem in our society, one that requires attention year-round, and in order to foster healthy communities, all citizens must support the effort to end sexual violence every month of the year. And whereas national and community organizations, businesses in the private sector, and the media are urged through national sexual assault awareness of sexual violence and strategies to increase the incidence of sexual assault. Now, therefore, we, the undersigned, do hereby proclaim the month of April as National Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month in Wilson County and all citizens to observe this month by supporting the goals and ideas of victims and those who work toward awareness and prevention and by participating in community activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> For those of you in the courtroom that don't know, Ms. Fernandez was an employee of the Sheriff's Department for several years and worked closely with the county attorney's office in, in many of these type of cases before she was employed by the Guadalupe Valley Family Violence Shelter and uh, always kept a very professional image and we really appreciate her service whether it be working with us or there or uh, all the total. So thank you so much. You need a motion, Jeff? Yes. Motion to Mr. Bally, Commissioner Fowler, all the
six, Ricky Romano, Ricky Morales. Get that. Seven, Larry Whiting, Wilson County Commissioner, Precinct 4, requests to purchase an asphalt super for precinct number four on by board. Mr. Whiting, Commissioner, file all favor. Right. As long as he comes try it on my roads. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> But the only complaint that I see is going to be 415 because there are, because of the situation that we had whenever uh, there was a protest uh, of how the lines were drawn, and now we have a split county with a uh, Cuellar on one side and, um, and also on the other. Uh, people in 415 that were part of the old Marcelina box were to be a part of the Stockdale box, and now they're going to have to go from there. To Laverne, and I don't have a better answer, but you're going to have complaints. Okay. Would you like for me in any way to change it? This is the time. Well, I, I, I don't, can, I, I, I can don't you, know how we would change it. Can you? Okay. They have to be wholly in one, though, right? Yes. You because uh, yeah, the thing about 415, and I think you've already answered right. my question, but if you could go from, say, 90 set or 530, uh, 539 south. To go into Stockdale and to the others to go. Or Floresville, either way. Yeah, I know. But Laverne is going to be. And there will be early voting, though. Yes. I think I think it's important that we, we uh, get the information out to these people that have difficulty in traveling that far, uh, that early voting is available to them. And, and it I, I, I had complaints about they're just having to go up to, uh, to Kicaster. So when you throw them to Laverne, because that. That side of the county doesn't really go to Lavender that much. They go to Floresville. That's where they really go to Floresville and maybe start with. It's just a problem that when we set this up, we didn't think we were going to have. Those folks were going to go into Stockdale. But they used to vote in the show one before we changed the Well, no, they voted at Marcelina. Marcelina yeah. They voted at Marcelina, and then when we changed it, 
uh, had I known that that line was going to change, well then I would have talked to you about leaving Marcelina and doing something else. Or, uh, do, you, do you want 415 to go into something else, or are you okay with I don't know that there's, like you said, there's not, there's not a good alternative. No, because okay. the, 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 the majority of the voters are up in the Kaicaster, that whole area up there on 775. So that group in general would be a lot more comfortable going into Probably Lavernia than they would going into Floresville. Uh, it's just we've got that, that small group of people out there that that um, fortune just didn't fall in their favor. And, and it's kind of sad. We can't deal with it now, and I don't know if we can deal with it. But well, honestly, if we'd have had a site that it could have been held at, we would have established a box for 17. Exactly. But there, there's there, no there, public there's buildings there's no, in no that. Public Place in, no, in areas. Areas. no, not uh, because Anyhow, we only have three the three boxes in precinct four. Um, but but you are going to get some complaints out there as well. Okay. And is there going to be a late night for FT? No, it'll be just that one week. Eight to five. And what week is that? And there's no Saturday. It is the week before the twenty seventh. Okay. Twenty seventh falls on the Tuesday. Is that, have you covered everything? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Welcome. I'm ready for Commissioner. Yeah, Commissioner Wiley. All right. Hey, uh, Commissioner Wiley, you've got a copy of the resolution for the slide at 122? Yes, I do. Would you read that into the record for us, please? Yes, let me, let me make a statement for sure. you. Sure. Yeah. Um, the reason that I ask that we revisit this is that we had a resolution, if you if people will recall, um, a couple of years ago to have a traffic study because of the increased traffic where we, the blinking light is in The uh, tech stock came and set up in early December. It was a rainy week. Um, the traffic apparently wasn't out as much as it should be. And their answer um, was that the amount of traffic did not reconcile with the cost associated with establishing a traffic light at that point. That they can't simply just change the flashing light to a regular stoplight. That it required now totally new equipment, which was $85,000 to establish a traffic light. The, the reason that I'm asking is twofold. One, we have had, um, gosh, this, this month we have three new oil-related companies coming into Stockdale. So the truck traffic continues to increase. But for whatever reason, TechStock has come in and they are now converting the intersection to the $85,000 they said they couldn't justify except instead of making it a traffic light, they're making it a flashing light as it was. And so th that was my justification. And it says resolution. Whereas there is currently a flashing signal at the intersection of State Highway 123 and Business 87 and downtown Stockdale. I should say beautiful downtown Stockdale. But, uh, whereas in October of 2011, Wilson County requested TxDOT consider installing a traffic light at the location. Whereas a traffic si signal study was conducted in accordance with the Texas Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, the intersection of Business 87 and State Highway 123 did not meet the minimum requirements for installation of the traffic signal. Whereas shortly after the study was completed, there was a fatality at the intersection. Whereas truck traffic has continued to increase and several trucking operations have relocated to Stockdale in the interim. Whereas TechStop is currently installing infrastructure that is necessary for a stoplight, but it appears they are only going to install a caution uh, light again. Now therefore, be it resolved, the Wilson County Commissioner's Court is requesting that a traffic signal be installed at this location. Installing a tra traffic signal now would save the cost of conversion at a later date. If a traffic signal is not being installed, Wilson County would like to request another traffic signal study be performed. Uh, presented this the 24th day of March 2014. 
13, Edwin Baker, Health and Public Safety, Lift the Firm Ban Discussion and Potential Action. Well, we're just, uh, as y'all go over in spring now, uh, we can go back to using that KBDI trial index that we use for firm ban. And uh, it has uh, the county well under, as a, as a whole, well under the line for a firm ban. But the dry areas is out precinct two and the three oaks area primarily. Uh, doesn't mean we won't have fires because we're still having them. They're just not getting away from us. Uh, generally, if grass fires one of the parkers may And uh, I'd like to recommend that we let the burn band and let them get some burning done before summer gets here and it does get dry again. We have to go back in the burn band. Okay. Got it? Five of them. Regardless, every time we lift the burn band or put the burn band on, we get complaints. And they are uh, areas, the county is a large county, and there's specific areas. And uh, when the burn ban is on, agriculture burning and everything, uh, was contacting the fire marshal to, to determine if it's safe or not. They, a lot of that is allowed, uh, depending on circumstances, on real high wind days. It's not, so it's just a matter of balance and trying to do our best to serve everybody. In, 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 and keep people safe and at the same time as he mentioned whenever you have dry uh, dry periods of time and, and uh, you're not able to use to burn uh, much of the brush and grass builds up and then it does create a large hazard, hazard whenever uh, it does get dry so uh, by being able to lift it for a period of time while it's relatively safe we're able to keep some of the larger fires down. So. Do you want them to still contact you on these ag burns? No, the, the, it'd be better if they just went ahead and, and took care of it. Uh, I mean, you know, I still have them calling the sheriff's department. And we've been trying for years to get them out of that habit, you know, to call over there and we'll tell you whether the burn man's on or off. Uh, do you want some type of record sent to you if they call it? No, I just there, there's no, there's really, other than being in a bird band, there's no way to make a call so we can ask them to. And I think one thing that's important for people to understand is that we put the burn band on, we take the burn band off. When the burn band's off, uh, burning, yeah, everybody's still responsible to, to be safe with it. If you burn your prop, uh, neighbor's property up, you're going to be held liable for it. You know? uh, it's not... Yeah, you know, it's, uh, and it's, primarily, Judge, we go by the outdoor burn regulations even during the burn ban, except for I drop the wind speed a little bit that we allow. That's pretty much it. Okay. Anything else on the burn ban? Uh, Anything else? Moving on to item 14, discuss and take action on 4th Street water main flow test required by City of Floresville for a library sprinkler design system 305 charged by the City of Floresville. Yeah, um, okay, the, for the International Engineer to finish up uh, our library plans, they require, the city will require us to have the fly flow test done 
he can size his meter. Uh, we met with the city, um, and they said they do them for us, uh, and then we came back to the bill a little bit later. So I'm not sure you can check with anybody in the city or not, but uh, it's about 200 bucks, but I need to get that so that they can use the calculations to make sure we have enough uh, length for the fire hydrant so we can do the fire for test. Fifteen discussions of potential actions shall occur regarding the procedure for preparing a new handbook of employment policy procedures which comply with the federal laws and local law for commissioner's court approval and training for managers after completion of the new handbook. That's mine. I think we all know that we're trying to put together a new employee uh, handbook. And we've had some discussion over that there is a committee um, on whether the committee should prepare it and then let uh, the county attorney review it, or the county attorney prepare the basic one uh, and mark the areas where the county has some options on what they want to do and then present it to the committee. So obviously our recommendation is that we be able to prepare it first and then take it to the committee. Basically a collaborative effort. You go through the current handbook and correct anything that might be not legal or, or not meet the correct. standards and take it back to the, uh, the committee, committee right. and the committee then will review that and we'll come to it right. and then present it to the court for approval. Is that correct? And I already have you know people bringing me things that aren't in our current one that need to go in there. And then I'll be responsible for making sure the legality, everything where the law has changed, will go in there. As, as a member of the committee, I don't have a problem with that as long as we work together and as long as you keep it simple and don't do a whole lot oh, of no, those I'm simple. attorney no. phrases. Well, I write very clearly I and, um, I, you know, no longer.